G'day, Mick from Zed Grills Australia here. This video, I'm going to show you how to assemble a Zed Grills 700E XL model. So let's start off by opening both boxes and unpacking everything, laying it all on the ground around us so we know exactly where everything is and we don't find that in about half an hour we can't find something and it's in a box in the bin in the corner. So with the main box, cut the straps, you can lift the lid straight off. If you don't have a table like me, you can use that box lid as a table. Works really well, especially when you're putting the base cabinet together. Handles in with the door here. Grease tray, we can leave the plastic on that for the moment, it's a bit oily. Top grill rack. Cabinet back plate. Cover. Wheels. Cabinet side panels. Cabinet base. This is the one sometimes people lose. This is the cabinet top brace. All right, this box is now empty. Put this over to the side. All right, let's get everything out of the drum. Two food temperature probes, let's put those over the side. Make sure you follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the manual to assemble everything. It'll make it much easier and you won't miss any steps. Now each of these drawings has the numbers 54, 53 of the corresponding bolts and nuts, etc. So just have a look on here, they're all labeled fairly straightforward. Now this is a point where a lot of people get stuck and get frustrated because they can't pull this box out. So what you need to do is cut this strap here, take some foam out, and you can take out this baffle. Once that is out, we can then easily pull this box out, which is a hopper. The next thing which is a little bit tricky to get out is the hopper and the auger assembly here because the end of the auger is underneath the lip in the grill here. So you have to kind of push this down, lift it across to get the cardboard free, and then you can lift it out. So once this corner here is out, and it can be lifted up, we can then go and lift this all out. Use your fingers, grab the guard, lift out, tilt forward, lift, too easy. Box with some good things in there. We'll open that in a sec. There's a little bit of foam in here, so it's not a bad idea if you've got a little vacuum, maybe just to vacuum that out. This is now empty, let's leave the grill to the side for the moment, and we can focus on putting the cabinet together. As I said, open all the boxes so you know where everything is. Oh, what's in here? Chimney cap. Take note, there's a white gasket in here. We need to use that, don't throw it away. All the screws and washers and bolts and even the tools you're gonna need are inside this packet here. I like to pop all the components out into a tray like this so I can easily find them. Obviously look at the numbers on here which is gonna match up with what's in the manual um, so you can keep track of everything. Hopper handle is in the tool kit. A magnetic screwdriver, so very handy. And two little spanners which you'll need as well. Nuts and bolts, spanners, screwdriver. Everything is unpacked so we are now good to start the assembly process. Step one, wheels. Two types of caster wheels with a lock, without the lock. Generally, you put the ones with the lock at the rear, which is what I'm gonna do, but it is up to you. They can go at the front if you prefer that. In terms of where the front is, the front is where these two screws are, which is where the magnets for the front door are gonna go. So we're gonna put these uh, locking wheels at the rear. Piece of paper, I put my thumb of my right hand in the center and rotate. Finger tight, little spanner underneath, and do not over tighten, that's perfect. Rotating the wheel does nothing. You've got to rotate the plate in the middle, which is why I use a bit of paper because it's oily, greasy. And in with the wheels, don't throw this away, these are the magnets for the front door. Carefully lock them, then flip. Magic. Alrighty, two screws in the front. Let's undo those. Open this little package which was in with the wheels, which has magnets. Rectangular slots forward. 
push them into place and make sure the little clips pop out. And that way, they're nice and strong and won't fall forward. Next step, sides and rear panel. So for the rear panel, we're using two of these number 52 screws, which are the ones with the big round head, Phillips head. Finger tight, finger tight, nothing needs to be tight yet. You can see how much easier this is doing it on a table, or I could be doing it on the lid of the big grill box. Don't do it at ground level. I've done it before, you get sore knees. Next part is this top bracket here, which I've forgotten a couple of times. Up, two magnets, the same as the bottom. If you want to double check, make sure the wings are out so they're stuck nice and tightly in place. And again, number 52 screws. Ooh, nearly fell on the ground. It'll be a miracle if I get through this whole uh, video without dropping a screw. I'm going to put this on the ground for the moment. Next, left and right doors. You'll see inside one of the doors, you've got two black handles, which are for these doors. And you've got a stainless steel handle, which is for the front of the drum over there. Now the next step is step six, hopper assembly. But I'm going to be a little bit cheeky. I'm going to jump forward and do step 10 and 11, which are the grill lid handle and these cabinet door handles because I've already got them on the table here and it's not going to cause any problems with our process. Now for these we need a number 53 bolt and number 54 washers. Do the first one nice and loose so you can move the second one around to line up with the hole otherwise you'll struggle to line it up. Spanner. Very important as well when you're doing something like this. Nice wide stance. Bend those legs. It's important to have good posture when you're assembling a Z grill. This is so much better than kneeling on the ground. We have two doors. Okay, time for step six, hopper assembly. So we want to lift this onto there. Let's make sure we get it in the right orientation. Let's put it sideways and then lift it on like Lead to the front. For this we want to use the number 63 nuts which have the little uh, star washer on them. And these four little black screws as well. At this point it's a good idea to put the manual down inside next to whichever screw you're putting in. Because if you drop one, it's going to disappear down in the auger. And you'll spend a lot of time fishing it out with the magnetic screwdriver. Screw on the outside, then nut with the star on the inside. So this little handle that was inside the Package there, we've got two screws and two little washers, which are the only two ones remaining. Alrighty, lovely. Take that off, blow that off. We can now go ahead and put the drum back on the cabinet, but because I want a nice flat surface here, where I am in my garage, I can go ahead and tighten up all these screws, which were previously loose. Don't forget these ones in the front rail here. The easiest way to lift this up is to use these hooks. And because I'm close to the garage door here, I'm gonna go this way. I lift, and then drop onto here. Four screws, no washers. Make sure the front is lined up here and the holes are lined up. Go ahead and remove these bolts and washers which are already on the hopper. Make sure you keep the white gasket in place, that's required. Before we put the hopper on, let's pull this cable back through and just loop it up over the handle on the lid so it's out of the way. We can then go and drop. We can slide the hopper in. Put your hip against it and put two top bolts in. Just loose for the moment. Grab the cables here which are running between the temperature sensor and the controller and plug that in. Now we want to bundle this up nice and neatly. The best way to do this is to do a squat beside the hopper here, put your hand underneath and you'll feel the power cable. If you untwist that, that comes down and there's a nice little twisty tie under there. Perfect to bundle up your temperature sensor cable. So give it a nice few little folds like this. Twist that around, tuck it down the side here so it's neatly 
out of the way like that all right now that's done let's go ahead and do up the, these bolts properly just use a little spanner tighten those up don't use a big socket set you'll end up getting too carried away and busting one of the threads we can now put on the front doors stiff rod at the bottom goes into the bottom here pull down the spring find a little hole boom, into place if you find the doors are not level it's because you've done it on an uneven ground and so if you can do it on a flat ground loosen the screws inside flatten it out and then do it again you'll find they sit quite nicely next is the chimney which is going to use the last two remaining bolts washers and nuts and you'll find there is one screw left over that's fine there's an extra screw so with our chimney and our white gasket we're doing bolt washer chimney gasket and then on the inside here a nut do it up loosely until you've got the second one in again using your belly to hold things in place and then now you can just use those two little spanners which are somewhere in my apron got a lovely Ziggler's apron do those up in terms of the height of the chimney cap we want a gap about the thickness of this packing cardboard that came with the Zegro. now there's already a nut on here which is almost the right height i like to make it a little tiny bit uh, a few turns higher which i've already done on this one a few turns higher and then you can screw it down into place nice and gently like that if you find your chimney cap is a bit loose one spanner on top one spanner on the underside where there's another nut and you just tighten it up bucket on there looking good we have the heat baffle the heat diffuser which goes inside first with the slots pointing this direction we then have our grease tray which goes in this direction with this big wing on the right hand side which goes into the v which the oil then drips down off this into the V and then into the bucket. We have our bottom grill rack here. The rear grill rack, put the V towards the back so your snags don't fall off the back. Put it in like this and then rotate around, making sure not to whack and damage the temperature probe on the left hand side here. Front one, V to the front, stop your food from falling off. Turn it at an angle. All right. Okay, we have our two food probes, which is plugged into the probe one and probe two on the controller here. And then they can just be pushed through this grommet on the side. These are high temperature rated, so they can stay inside the grill. Excellent work, you've put together your 700 EXL. Next step is to go through the initial startup procedure and burn in your new grill. The instructions are in the manual and also on our YouTube video and our website. If you've got any questions, of course, just reach out to us. Now, if you completed the whole assembly process in less than 42 minutes and 23 seconds, I think it is at the moment, you've broken the Australian record. Excellent work. Now, if you did that in under 90 minutes while drinking beer, that's a bloody good effort too. Now you have the joy of cleaning up all this rubbish, recycling beer time. Now, in terms of how to make these shorter, little tip, so easy. Cheers.